Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. I'm going to talk to you about a topic today which I've never broached, but I'm very excited about it. It's called the fretless bass. <laughs> I have a little bit of a perhaps a unique perspective on a, what you need to do and want to do to learn to play the fretless well, and I think you might enjoy it. I thought to start with I'd just play it a little bit so you could sort of hear me, you know, just play the bass and then we'll talk it, okay? Here we go. Let's play a little groove. Two. Mm -mm. playing and teaching the fretless bass for well over 40 years now and uh, I absolutely love it. I played the double bass for about 30 years so that was my fretless bass. I didn't really play fretless on electric bass during that whole period of time but uh, the electric bass you know sort of came into its own everybody was playing it. I had a number of students who went on to learn to play the fretless bass very well. When I started playing fretless electric bass I want to tell you a little story it was very interesting. Uh, a student came and I uh, and he said to one of my bass workshops, he said, hey, Jim, uh, check out my bass. And I played it and I fell in love with it. And I said, can I play it a whole bunch of the next couple of days? And I did. And I ended up purchasing one. It was a Rob Allen instrument, just a great instrument. And I uh, got the bass uh, and I pulled it out and I was playing on it, you know, eight weeks later, about 10 weeks later when I, when I got the bass. And I couldn't seem to play it in tune. And I'm going, oh, my God. Did I make a mistake here? Like, you know, getting myself a fretless bass? What did I bite off? You know, what? I can't chew it, right? And, and, and I kept thinking, oh my God, and I kept trying. And then all of a sudden I put it down and I got back uh, on it and I started just sort of jamming around, playing a little blues. Oh, actually it was a rhythm changes thing. And I'm playing in tune as could be. And I thought, how did that happen? And then I realized without worrying about it and thinking about it, I was playing the hand position, the shape, the posture that I had practiced on my double bass for 25 years and it just worked very well. So that led me to understand that one of the biggest challenges with people trying to play the fretless bass and that is they worry about it. <laughs> of course we all want to play in tune. So here's the first thing. You can't see it in tune and you can hear it if it's out of tune but it's not really like you can hear it in tune. What I mean by that is, is if you don't put the note down in the right spot, well, it's out of tune. And of course you can correct. Let's do this D here. So here's my harmonic D, and here's this D. Actually, let's do it the other way around. Let's be easier. Here's G, and here's G. Whoa. Yes, now I can correct it, can't I? But guess what? If you get really good at correcting it, you know, hearing it, and then pulling it in tune, well, that means you're out of tune to start with. So how do you play in tune? You work on hand position, posture. I saw Scott not the other day say, man, I don't know why everybody worries about it. Just got to use good hand position. Yes. Now the problem is, is most people don't practice good hand position on their fretted bass. So my first advice is you want to play the fretless bass? Get good posture on your fretted bass. And I mean like a lot of practice. 
I've had, I've taught a number of students who said, Jim, I want to play the fretless. I said, great, let's see you play. And we worked for a year or two scales, arpeggios, technique, etudes to get the hands in the right position. They just by muscle memory go there. So when I put them on this bass, they're in tune. People say, man, you have to have a really good ear to play the fretless bass in tune. Well, you can, you have a good ear, you can tune it. But again, from here to there, that involves a physical activity, a muscle memory, not the ear. <clears throat> Another thing is you've got to practice enough that you are physically comfortable with the basic shapes. What I mentioned a while ago, major scale, when you're playing real music, there's no time to go, is that note in tune, is that one in tune? And if you're playing the bass like this, you might be able to play in tune, but every time you have to move like this, the odds are that's a, you know, that's a big risk of playing out of tune. There are a few guys who have, quote, you know, bad technique and play in tune. Most people who play the fretless bass well in tune, kind of like that Jayco guy, if you watch his hands, man, they're just exactly right where they need to be. So you need to practice fundamental stuff. Now, down here in the bottom end, it's a stretch to play one finger per fret. So you can learn to do it. You can also play double bass finger. Doesn't make any sense because you're shifting a ton, but I do that a lot. Watch this. I'll play a blues and F. How cool did you see for those last little arpeggios? Because it made sense, I went to a regular one finger per fret. It didn't make sense to go. So, so I stretched it out. And up here, it's easy. So I found if I didn't worry about it, because I had spent years of practicing good technique on both the double bass and the electric bass, that when I play my fretless, I tend to play double bass finger in here. I tend to play electric bass finger, what I call one finger per fret up here. And I know there's guys who don't agree with that, or they say do this or don't do that. Well, whatever. I'm just telling you what I've learned. And the guys that I work with, who make that move to fretless bass from fretted, oh my God, they play perfectly in tune. They just don't worry about it. They just put their hands up here and they have good posture. See, again, let's think about this. I mean, it's so logical and simple, but we miss it. Here's this note and here's that note. Those are an octave. Well, if you play the bass like this, you don't have anything ready for that note. So you have to go or, well, that's an option of being out of tune. But what if you just do this? And this hand position I've worked on by practicing things that I know. You don't really need those things of like, well, man, you got to be able to jump from here to there. When do you do that in a real bass line? Most of the times not. What you need are half steps and whole step positions and then ultimately shifts. Now, we didn't for that scale, but I just indicated that or I illustrated that shift. So it's all about good hand posture and position here. Let me talk a little bit about the instrument now. I set up the fretless bass with a moderately low action. The reason why is I like this. I like that vibrating sound. And a big part of that zzz vibrating sound is the lowness of the strings buzzing really against the fingerboard. If this were a fretted bass, these strings would rattle, probably too much, but I like the rattle. On the fretless, dig this. Let's see. Yeah. So I set the strings up fairly low. That means I also make the fingerboard real flat. Check this out. This one's almost too flat. Watch this. Oh, listen to that. Right? 
right in that one little spot. You say, Jim, the fingerboard's uneven. No, it's not. It's perfectly smooth. It's just that it's a little flat there, and it might be even bend a little bit further back. But you have to work with that. Maybe even go too far to where everything's kind of zzz, 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 and then back it off to the amount of buzz you want, okay? Let me play a little bit more here. Um... <laughs> sort of consistent buzz that, that that we get from fingerboard i like this too some people use a real hard ebony uh, fingerboard and i've got that as my basis but this is a medium soft fingerboard this is that Goncalo alls it's a quarter son you know it's got that really pretty green in it and yeah people say well jim don't you worry about playing your uh, round round strings on it not really don't you know that it's going to wear out well eventually yeah but I believe if I like the sound, I'm just going to play the P out of it until it does wear it out. And I'll just have the fingerboard replanged again. By the way, that's what you do on the double bass. You play it like crazy. And then a two, two or three years later, you get the little grooves sanded out of it. You can do that on electric. No big deal. Okay. I hope just a few of those little tips uh, helped. <laughs> Maybe I'll play a little bit here again on the way out. How about this one? Um, ah. Fire. 